but let's just say that uh, base metal mining got cut in half. Uh, what would that do to the silver supply? Well, it should be huge because, again, the bulk of silver comes from base metal mining, not from primary silver producers. So actually a contraction in mining, generally speaking, is more bullish to silver than it is any other metal. There's a lot of things, I mean, but, you know, buying pressure is primarily it. And the other factor that we haven't talked about much is, you know, how much um, rehypothecated silver is out there. In other words, you know, multiple ownerships on the same bar. But I don't want to go down that rabbit trail. Let's focus on the demand side and, and assume everything is on the up and up. So if we do that, uh, we have a basically a billion ounce a year market about 850 from mining worldwide and about 150 million ounces from recycling. So round number is 1 billion. Sometimes it's been over that, I think once or twice, and it's been under that the last few years, but it's a good round number. So of that 50% is industrial. Um, silverware and jewelry is another 25%. So that's 75% that's just gone every year. And then uh, about 10% right now is goes to um, to solar. So we're down to 15% is what you call, what I would call the open float, which of course is, is investment demand. And then of course we get into whether the amount of silver on an annual basis is in a, uh, a deficit or not. In other words, there's more investment demand for silver than uh, has been mined in that particular year. So if you look at that part of it, that is uh, 150 million ounces, 15% of a billion, 150 million ounces. You can go back year and year. I'm doing this from memory, so you can check my silver guru status. But I'd say conservatively over on a, on a good year, you'll have 100 million ounces that come from a retail loan. You know, for, I mean, on a good year, you have 40 million just silver eagles, not counting the other sovereign mitts, not counting silver rounds, not counting, you know, 10 ounce bars, 100 ounce bars, kilo bars, and all the other investment demand that comes from the retail side. So if we factor in, a, I would say, conserve 100 million ounces, that leaves about 150 million ounces to be available to let's say institutional or larger investors if we put it in those terms it doesn't really matter i mean it's, it's available for anybody but my point is getting to your question someone with some deep pockets that wants to buy silver there's just really not that much there and it would take um you know what is it uh oh it'd take about a billion dollars i guess to basically wipe out that 20 dollars silver um that float on any given year. And there's never been that kind of, well, there has been that kind of demand in 2020. We saw um, double that demand. We saw 320, I think it was, million ounces that went into the ETFs, ETPs in 2020. The largest influx of silver into investment ever from, an, from the institutional side. And on top of that, it was a good year retail was 200 million ounces in retail alone, not top, you know, counting the bigger investors I just mentioned, 320. So had 520 million ounces that were used as investment for 2020 in the silver market. We went from 18 to 28 pretty quickly. And of course, now we're back down to 20, as we all know. So my point is that uh, if someone isn't going to just play with the ETFs and the ETPs, I'm not trying to discount them too much, but I want to discount them. Someone was to come in and play hardball and take physical metal and probably store it outside of the exchanges in a uh, private vault, for example. It wouldn't take very much to move the silver market. First of all, this woman from Texas, I mean, with her um, ability to you know see what's coming and protect you know some of her wealth in real metal is. You know, it's a given. And, and many people that are of that caliber uh, do it, but they don't really talk about it. And I commend her for being willing to uh, let Andy and, and <clears throat> Bill Holter, and I know them both quite well, actually, uh, talk about it. So a lot of people are not leaders or followers. And uh, so, you know, you'll see more, more and more come into it. On the institutional side, it depends. I mean, I remember early on in my speaking career being in London at uh, one of the London 
shows and one of the fund managers came up to me and basically said um, it was just too small uh, a market for him to put any real money into the silver market. And he walked away. I was a little frustrated and I, and it was very early on in my speaking career. And I have a perfect retort after he left the table <laughs> and as well, it wasn't too small for Warren Buffett. You know, Buffett bought 129 million ounces. But think about that, you know, going to that 130 million ounces of the round number, 129.7 that Buffett bought, um, that is, uh, you know, a a good retail market these days. And it's um, less than half of what was invested in 2020 by institutions. So, you know, if you want another Warren Buffett, you only have to go back to 2020 and look at what went into the ETPs to get an idea of how much demand there can be in the silver market. My point is, with that antidote, is that there are, you know, there's so much funny money sloshing around. It's mostly going to be retail that goes into it because the larger institutions are going to go to gold. It's a much bigger market relative to the silver market. Gold is extremely small. Uh, you might see like Bill Gates, he bought um, Pan American Silver very early on uh, due to a, a fund manager that basically convinced him of the dynamics of the silver market. And uh, there will be much enthusiasm once the run to gold starts in earnest and a lot of it will spill over to silver. Silver will outperform, I'm convinced. Uh, it always has. I see the reason it wouldn't this time especially just on the industrial side. And one more point that I've got from a a member, a premium member recently, and he said, well, you know, your industrial argument's pretty strong, but with uh, the contraction in the global economy that you keep talking about, isn't that going to curtail industrial demand for silver? And the answer is yes. Yes and no. It's a tough answer. Yes, uh, and generally speaking, because it'll be less less widgets built, less things made of silver. However, there's more demand on the solar side, whether they balance out or not, I don't know. But here's the point. That will curtail copper mining, lead, zinc mining, tin, all your other base metals will not be mined as heavily as they have been in the past due to the contraction. And that's actually a bonus to silver because 70% is a result of base metal mining. So if you factor just for a thought experiment, I'm not saying it's going to be this hard, but let's just say that uh, base metal mining got cut in half. Uh, What would that do to the silver supply? Well, it should be huge because, again, the bulk of silver comes from base metal mining, not from primary silver producers. So actually a contraction in mining, generally speaking, is more bullish to silver than it is any other metal. Because, again, it's a byproduct metal that's 70%. If it's only 20%, would be a big deal. But since it's the lion's share of the market, it is a big deal. So I want to make that point very clear.